Hello and welcome back to our channel. I'm Zoe Jewell and today I am going to be talking about my thoughts about Beyonce's new record, Cowboy Carter as a Swifty. Now, before we get into my breakdown, my thoughts, now that we've had a little over a week to dissect the album, to live with the album, for it to really sink in. I feel like now I can actually share my comprehensive thoughts. I can make a little bit more, I can think forward. I just, I've, I've lived with the album now. It's basically been on repeat for me for the last week. So now I feel like I can actually come on here and share how I truly feel. Um, if you missed my reaction video from last week, please go watch that. You can see my live reaction to all of Cowboy Carter, all of her songs. I cried, I was moved, I thought it was incredible, amazing, wonderful, like you can hear all of my initial thoughts in that reaction video. And I share in that video and at the beginning that I am a Beyonce fan. I really like Beyonce, I loved Renaissance, her last album. I've really honestly loved all of her albums. I've seen Beyonce on tour, like I am definitely a Beyonce fan. I don't know that I would say I'm a part of the Bay Hive necessarily because I, I mean, there are some true diehards who are dedicated to like, I mean, fully obsessed and listen, I respect it wholeheartedly as a Taylor fan, as a Taylor stan, as a massive Swifty who has been obsessed since I was 15 years old. I 100% get and respect the fandom and uh, the dedication, simply put. Um, but I did want to... I did want to kind of go in and share more of my thoughts about the album, as I said, now that we've had about a week to live with it. And so I've kind of broken it down into like five main points that I wanted to discuss. Um, and there's so much to discuss as it pertains to this album. And I really encourage everybody, if you are a Beyonce stan, if you're just getting into Beyonce, if this is like one of the first albums you've really listened to of Beyonce's, which by the way, like, where have you been? But Hey, happy you're here, I suppose. There's so much great content out there, podcasts, YouTube videos, people that really are breaking down <clears throat> the album as a whole, um, and, and, and also really getting into the nuance of the album and <clears throat> what it means for country music, what it means for Beyonce to be a black woman in the country space. All of that um, are things that I cannot necessarily speak to, obviously. So I definitely encourage people to go and check out that content and find it out there because there's some great people talking about it. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go through my five kind of main takeaways from the album. As I said, I am a... Swifty. I'm a diehard Taylor fan. And, you know, we've seen over the last year or so Beyonce showing up for Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift showing up for Beyonce, women supporting women. And so I thought, yes, this is a Taylor Swift channel, but we can still love and support and respect other artists like Beyonce because she's absolutely incredible. Um, okay. So let's dive in to my first takeaway, the first thing that is still true, it was true when I listened to this album the first time, and it is still true today, which is that Bodyguard is my favorite song on the album. I've obviously, like everybody else, I've been on like the Cowboy Carter side of TikTok, social media. I've seen everybody's takes, everybody's opinions, and it does seem to me like a lot of people love Bodyguard, just like me. I was worried, worried's the wrong word. I wasn't sure whether or not it would stay my favorite song. It was clearly my favorite song when I first heard the album. Like first listen through, I was like, this song's amazing. But I didn't know if it was gonna stay my favorite song as I listened throughout the week, but it is still my favorite song. I love the like Fleetwood Mac vibe from it. It's just, it makes me feel good. The second it starts to, to play, I'm just like, I just feel happy. I wanna listen to it like in the car with the sun shining in. Like it just, it makes me feel good. I love it. I honestly, I, I find myself like listening to the whole, whole, whole album and then like when Bodyguard comes on, I just like wanna play it again because I love it that much. So still a week from the release date, it's still my favorite off the album. Okay, but my second point that I wanna discuss is that the most fun song on the album is Yaya, which is sensational. I said this in the reaction video, but I cannot wait to hear this song live. I need her to perform this song live. I need, I just need to see it because it is so, it's so fantastic. It's so, 
I don't even know how to describe it. I don't have words to describe it. I love it so much. And I just need, this is a song that I feel like needs to be seen live. Needs to be seen live. And, and knowing Beyonce, who's like arguably the best performer we have right now, um, you know that she's gonna give it 110% and it's going to be sensational. So I still I still love Bodyguard, but Yaya to me is like the most fun. And if I were if I was going to a, a Beyonce concert right now, and you could and you said to me you can only hear one song off of this album um, live, it would be Yaya because I know it's going to be like off the charts. Okay, my third take, my third point, and this might be a little controversial, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Blackbird as a cover, A+. Been seeing a lot of people on the internet talk about how they don't like it, they, they don't think it's very good, they didn't feel like it was very impactful, they didn't feel anything from the song. I disagree with that. I thought it was beautiful. The harmonies, the other people on the song, the voice, I mean, her voice on the song, I loved it. However, after sitting with the album for a week, I don't, love the Jolene cover. Now we can get into all of this. Obviously, Beyonce changed the lyrics to, to Jolene. Talked about it in the reaction video. It's been talked about all over social media. I feel like a lot of people have opinions about, well, both covers, but specifically Jolene. And I think where I've landed is, I can understand why Beyonce changed the words. I get it, I understand it. But to me, the power of Jolene and why that song works so well especially with Dolly and her voice and everything, is the desperation. It's this desperation, like, please don't take this man from me because I don't know who I will be without him. And it's, you you feel for the Dolly as she sings the song in the original. Like, the lyrics are so, they really cut through and you can really feel it. Beyonce's version is obviously much more biting. It's much more, um like don't F with me vibe, which I can understand, again, I understand why she went that route, but it doesn't work the same for me. I don't feel the song the same way that I do when it's the original with Dolly Parton. I don't know if I'm alone in that. So I would love to know if you have the same feelings, different feelings, and also what you think of both of these covers, because again, lots of opinions, lots of thoughts on the internet in regards to these two songs. Um, and I would love to know what you guys think. I, I also don't find myself, like when I first heard the Jolene cover, I was like, oh, okay. But I don't find myself going back to it. And I think that's when I can tell for myself, like whether or not, I, I actually really do like it or not, is do I keep returning to the song? And I don't find myself returning to the song. Um, okay, number four, this is a Beyonce album and not a country album. We heard Beyonce say this prior to the album coming out, that like, this isn't a country album, this is a Beyonce album. And at first I'm like, okay, like, sh we'll, we'll see about that. But she's 100% right. It has country influence, obviously. There's aspects of the album that a peer country, she obviously has country legends that are a part of the album with Dolly Parton, w Willie Nelson, like it's definitely country influenced, but it's a Beyonce record. And I, I said this in the reaction, like as the album progressed, it became more and more and more a Beyonce album. And you heard more and more of like who Beyonce really is as an artist come through as the album progressed. Um, and I love that because, and I also love what she says about genre with this album. Like when we put ourselves in these boxes and we say, oh, this is country or this is pop or this is this. It's like, it definitely, it confines us, it restricts us. And I, I love that we're in an era of music where people are free to like, just be the artist they wanna be and not feel like they have to live in these very confined walls. And I think, I think a lot of artists have started to do this over the course of time and in, recent years, but I think with this album in particular, Beyonce is really saying to the world, like, you can't put me in a box. You can try, but it's not gonna work. Um, and I think she was 100% right about that. Okay, my final point, the final thing that I've, I've come to realize, it's more of a prediction, honestly, than, than anything else, is that I do think Cowboy Carter will win Album of the Year at the Grammys. Now, again, we're in April. There's still a lot of months left in the year. There's still a lot of albums left to listen to. We obviously have Taylor Swift's album coming out. We have Dua Lipa's album coming out. I'm sure there's gonna be more of that we'll discuss down the road. But here's the deal. Beyonce's never won album of the year. And she, she makes a point to let people know that. 
I mean, obviously Jay-Z mentioned that in his Grammy speech this year. Beyonce mentions it in, in the album. Whether or not she would admit it or has admitted it or actually feels this way, I do think she wants to win album of the year. And who wouldn't, right? She's the, she's won the most Grammys of all time, but she's never won album of the year. Doesn't really make sense. I think this album will win it though, because one, it's so, I feel like it's really taken the world by storm. Texas Hold'em also was such a massive hit and it still is such a massive hit. And I feel like that song leading into the release of the album and then now going forward, I think it's going to carry it. Uh, and really amplify it in a way that maybe other Beyonce albums haven't been amplified before, or at least in recent years. Also, like if we're using Taylor as um, someone who might be competition, Taylor just won album of the year for a fourth time. She has more album of the year wins than anybody else. And obviously I love Taylor Swift. This, or the, we, you know, we have this whole channel because I love Taylor Swift, but I don't think the Academy is going to give her album of the year again, two years in a row. Um, especially after she's just won it and just broken the record. Um, even if it's a great, I mean, and who knows? We haven't heard the album yet, so it's too early to say for certain. Um, but I just, I think the momentum is in Beyonce's favor. I think this was such a unique swing for her. I think it's, it's just such a special album in so many ways. And I think it's going to get her album of the year. Well, we'll have to revisit this when the, I think it's probably February of 2025 when the Grammys will be held. We'll have to see if I'm right about this prediction. So there you have it. Those are my thoughts on Cowboy Carter, how I feel. Again, it's only been a week, so maybe we'll revisit these thoughts in a month's time. Maybe we'll do a whole music rundown at some point of all the music that's come out this, this year so far. Love the album. Think it's fantastic. I'm going to keep listening to it throughout the rest of the spring and into the summer. I would love to know your thoughts on the album, your favorite songs, least favorite songs, what you like, not like. Please share all your thoughts in the comments below. If you love Taylor Swift and if you love friends of Taylor Swift, please subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.